She said party mato. I said bonsu bato. Nakota here, doing a um, very late, very sweaty. Sorry, I'm, I've been off work for a while and haven't had the chance to shower, but I'm trying to look as good as possible. It's time for an album review, dude. Uh, David Nails, latest project, Fighter. It's gonna be kind of a shock um, for a lot of people to see me uh, reviewing this. Sorry, I got this tag on my new tripod. You know, country is one of my favorite genres, and, and it's something that I listen to a lot. It's something I grew up on, um, and there are dozens upon dozens of country artists I like. However, the new Nashville has never been my thing. Although, David Nail, this is the fourth album we're getting from him. It's the first project I've listened to since his debut, and I didn't even know this came out. I just saw this on the shelf and thought, how old is this? It's only a couple weeks old. I've been jamming out to the past a uh, few days on it, and um, here's here's some of the thoughts I have on this record. So keep in mind that we're dealing with a country music album, a major label country music album, that is 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 being made in the year 2016. Pretty much every country music song for the past five years or so um, has involved um, blue jeans, um, a girl dancing, um, a truck, beer, well not beer, cold beer. Um, you know, that one of the nights of the weekend, um, a football game, and of course mentioning whatever you're listening to on the stereo at the time. Like, these are all the elements you need to make a, a, a successful top 40 country hit. I'll even make them one up on the spot just to prove to you that you can do this with anything that's all interchangeable. Um, Dancing on my truck, she's looking all right. Got a cold beer on Friday night, yeah. Hank's coming out the radio after the football game. Just make me say whoa, girl, make me say whoa. That right there could be number one. Um, but anyway, so I was worried about this record. You know, I went into this thinking it's going to be a bunch of tracks of just this, and I thought, David Nail, it's been seven years since I've listened to David Nail. He's probably, that is plenty of room to have sold out between 2009 and 2016. He's probably given in and is doing what every other Luke Bryan and Kane Brown and, and Cole Swindell and Thomas Rhett does, and that is just making crappy country pop. I'm pleasantly surprised on this record. You know, this album started off with "I'm Good at Tonight," which I like a couple of the lines on it. You know, you know, I've, I'm, you know, I've never been good, uh, or I've never been steady for tomorrow, but I'm good for tonight. Like, let's party, live it up. Okay, a little bit, a little bit corny, but it was okay. Featuring the Brothers Osborne on this track, you know, it was it was a decent opener. You know, it's it's a lot more traditional than a lot of other stuff you're hearing. So I'm thinking, okay, this might not be bad, and it gets into track two with Nights on Fire. Uh, uh, and right away, this song wastes no time into getting into that horrible new Nashville sound. With the big We Will Rock You imitating boom clap things going on, with a banjo playing a very poppy progression, accompanied by the background chant vocals of the whoa, 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 whoa. And eventually getting into talking about, oh, uh, we're just gonna live it up tonight. Yeah, the night's on fire. The very generic country, frat boy country stuff you hear about from everyone else. So it went into that track. I'm thinking, oh no, here we go. But this again, this album, surprised me. It goes into the third track, Ease Your Pain, um, which was actually co written by Chris Stapleton and, and Lee Thomas Miller. If you don't know Lee Thomas Miller, um, he's, he's a hit maker, one of Nashville's hit makers. He's written uh, The Impossible by Joe Nichols and uh, co-wrote In Color by Jamie Johnson, which was a huge hit a while back. Um, but this song was, was pretty decent. You know, this was a little bit more upbeat, a little bit more punchy. I liked it. But where this album starts to, to just take off and soar and, and, and leave the mediocre opening tracks behind is track four. Once it gets to home featuring Lori McKenna, for the majority of this album, with the exception of one track from home to the end of this album, it is, it is, um, it's a good ride, you know, and I say that, take it with a grain of salt because I'm talking about a modern country record, so if you compare this to an old Don Williams album, or even an old Diamond Rio album. Let's not even go that far back. Let's go like, 
you know, uh, Andy Griggs or Mark Wills around that time, even if you hold this up to that, it's not going to have the same musicality, it's not going to have the same sentiment, although this album does have a ton of sentiment, don't get me wrong about that. Some very, very pretty piano being played. You know, this time, this, this song takes its time to get, uh, to get to the chorus, you know, the, uh, the, the, the or, excuse me, to get to the singing. The first verse, not even coming in until, like, about a few seconds after the one minute mark, just gorgeous pianos being played at the beginning, gorgeous guitars, some very faint, pretty pads in the background, the song is calm, the song is tranquil, the song is kind of new age, in all honesty. Um, it's just very relaxing and, and, and somewhat meditative. Then we have the song Lie With Me, which follows that, which is actually a pretty decent track. Um, I like it. It kind of resembles um, that song Springsteen. <laughs> is very similar in melody to that. That was my only really issue with that, but it was a good song. Um, I Won't Let You Go with Vince Gill. Wow. First of all, it's another mellow track. Like, again, the, the, from four on out of this album, it's a pretty mellow album, which is good. There's a lot of, you know, mus you know musical talent being displayed, you know, with ses session musicians. The songs take their time um, to really convey the meaning of the songs, to, to get across the emotion. Um, David Nails doing some really good songwriting on this record. So, I Won't Let You Go, the chords on it are very nice, and a, a big part of this song's um, enjoyability and a big part of its charm can be attributed to Vince Gill because Vince Gill has been around for a while now. And David Nail and Vince Gill do sound good together. They don't sound great together. This is not an incredible wow. Why have these two never worked together before? But it, the more you listen to it, you go, okay, like this kind of sound good. But, you know, Vince Gill is getting up there in age, so his voice is a little bit, you know, fainter um, and uh, not as strong as it was on the albums that were coming out in the 90s. Um, as well as David Nail has been around for almost a decade now, so in his later 30s, he's losing a little bit um, of, of his vocal quality as well, but they do sound good on this track. But actually, this, the, the way this song is written with chords kind of reminds me of an old Ronnie Millsap tune, um, but the cool thing about it is, is it doesn't have all the glitz and glam and extravagance as a Ronnie Millsap track does. Not that there's anything wrong with Ronnie Millsap songs because I love him, um, but it's nice to hear this kind of song um, and these chords just more relaxed and, and calmer. And then the song Fighter comes on after that, which is probably, more than likely, I, the more I think about it, my favorite instrumental on this whole album. There are just some really nice guitar tones being played on this thing throughout the background. The chord progressions are nice. There's you know, just the perfect amount of reverb. It sounds so peaceful. Um, every now and then a song has the, the, the capability to sound very familiar like you've heard it before, but it, yet it's brand new to you. And this is a song that does that. It uses very um, familiar chords, but at the same time puts its own spin on it. Um, this is very lush, pretty, kind of um, savage, garden-y country. Oh, and the music on it is so pretty and relaxing, but, you know, David Nail also, what I assume talking about um, a relationship with a woman, talking about, you know, I knew everything about you, here are all the details about you, but I never knew that you were one to cause conflict. I never knew that you would shut me out like this. I, I love it, especially some of the, the background vocals that come in on, on the outro of the track. Follows up with a song called Babies, which is a nice, you know, sentiment about David Nail, you know, having been through a lot of crazy things in his life, but uh, really, you know, the craziness of a parent is his favorite kind of, you know, thing to experience. But it's a very, very good track. It was very well written. But, you know, then we get to the song Got Me Gone. And this is the one track I was talking about that interrupts the whole great, smooth, relaxing, emotional flow that this album takes on. Um, Got Me Gone, um, you know, it's not as bad as Nights on Fire. Um, but it's it's still pretty. It's just, uh-uh. Like, oh, you... You never look so good in those uh, those shorts and all the things you're whispering in my ear. You want to tell? He sounds nothing like this, by the way. All it's my country voice. All the things you want to tell me and you're gonna do to me, blah 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 and blah blah blah. And it's like this is stupid and played out in all honesty. But again, after that, with Champagne Promise and Old Man Symphony, it it finishes really decently. I think had you taken 
that one track out, uh, Got Me Gone, you take that out, this album would have finished strong, but that kind of killed the momentum that it was having. But Champagne Promise is, is a really good song, and Old Man Symphony, while I'm not crazy about it, because you have a couple guys from Need to Breathe, which is a band that I'm not familiar with, I've never listened to them, I know who they are, um, they're kind of like an alt country, southern rock, Christian band, which is strange. Um, but they did not add anything to this track, to be honest. The sentiment of, you know, David Nail writing this ode to one of his family members that's passed away, it's it's so well written. The lyrics on this thing are so beautiful and, and poignant. And really, if you can look the lyrics up, please do, because it's, it's surprising how, how good of a song this is, especially David Nail having written this all by himself. It's impressive. It's very impressive. There's a couple other small things that bother me on this album, um, and, and the first one that sticks out um, is that David Nail has a good voice. However, his voice has waned a little bit since he was signed seven years ago, so it doesn't have the strength that it does, you know. And, hit, and there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes David Nail changes the shape or the sound of words um, to to be able to hit them. Uh, for The song you hear on most is the song Lie With Me. Instead of in the chorus him holding out lie and singing lie with me, he says le with me and it sounds like a French Canadian person singing it. While I can, I can understand the Vince Gill and the need to breathe um, citations in the feature listing, um, there's a lot of good backup singing going on on other tracks on this album, and here's here's my problem with that is that Lori McKenna is is given a feature on this album, and the Osborne brothers are given a feature on this album, and Vince Gill is given a feature on this album, but they're not doing anything differently than the other background singers on this album are doing. They're not taking their own verses. All they're doing is providing background on the chorus. So, to me, I feel as if, if the background singers are doing the same thing as these big name artists, then you need to either, one, take all the features off and just add those in the liner notes as opposed to the back of the album, or two, put everyone's name that's involved on there. Like, if they're doing the same thing, if they sound just as good, give them the same amount of credit. Just because, you know, they're a nobody, or they're not signed, or they're just a session musician, don't discredit their contribution to this project. I'm kind of happy that I've found a, a country record in a, in a year like this um, that I can enjoy, at least a major label one, because there's a lot of great independent artists who are still staying true to the country sound. Um, and I'm surprised with what David Neal has done. Uh, I think this is very different, at least from the other stuff I've heard from him. And it kind of makes me excited to check out his next project, but it also is kind of detrimental to it because I'm going to hold it to a higher standard. Like, I really do enjoy this album. It may sound like I've been bashing it, but I enjoy it. There's, there's great, um, you know, session work on this. There's really good songwriting on this. There's good production here. I think this album has a little bit of something for every spectrum of country music listeners. So, overall on this album, believe it or not, I'm feeling a B. Um, this album is good. This has had a, a high amount of replay. Not only did I review it because um, I thought it would be interesting, but now I'm reviewing it because I want to. And uh, I, I support this album, and we'll keep this in rotation. So yeah, go support David Nail. Um, go check out this record um, if you if you can. It's available at your local retailer and online. It's very, very easy to find. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. Some more reviews will be coming. There is another country music review coming. Um, won't mention what it is, you'll see when it's posted. Um, but yeah, anything else you want me to review, please, of course, as always, let me know. And uh, hope you liked my shirt in this one.